Hello everyone, we're back uh, with the final steps for creating an 11 step value scale uh, using our two uh, chroma darks, one's cool, one's warm, and we will be mixing these together uh, to create an achromatic neutral black or neutral dark. Um, and this is the mixture we will use uh, to create our darkest dark. And then by adding white, move to our lightest light, which will be pure titanium white uh, in this 11 step value scale. And uh, for the recommendations for this, you could use either cardstock, which I have here. This is a scrap piece of cardstock uh, that I'm using to create my value scale. You can also use newsprint uh, and paint swatches of your values on the newsprint and then cut those out neatly and place those in an 11 step uh, value scale. So these are the guidelines given on page 45 of your text. Um, and these are the guidelines that I am following. I'm also going to paint um, my pure cool chromatic dark here and my pure um, warm chromatic dark here. And I'll add white to show the difference in how each one is actually cool uh, and the other one is warm. Um, so this is it. Uh, so you should have these supplies uh, and mixtures ready to go when you begin. And then the next step will be uh, to get my palette mix these two together to get my uh, achromatic neutral dark and then I will begin going through how to paint um, each bar of light or dark uh, to make a smooth progression from your darkest dark uh, to your lightest light. Okay, so let's check this out. We are now at the last stage of project one where we will now uh, paint in our 11 step value scale. This will be the achromatic black and this will be pure titanium white. Uh, the middle will be a middle gray uh, and this will represent middle gray before we go to our darkest dark and our lightest light. I have at the top a small circle of the chromatic dark cool and a small circle of the chromatic dark warm. Okay, so at this point we'll fill in the first rectangle with our pure achromatic black. And if you've noticed uh, right here around this rectangle, I've used easy release tape so I can have a sharp edge uh, on each of these rectangles and so it'll look neat uh, and the craft will be presentable. Um, this is also on a piece of uh, scrap cardstock um, and that is fine just remember when you're done uh, to cut it away so you can mount it uh, on another piece of paper and this way it will stay in good condition and you can use it as a reference okay so let's begin this process with putting in our first darkest dark and I will take a little bit out and I'll put it on the palette I don't need a lot Move some over here and I'll add a little bit of retardant to this and then mix this in. And this is the basic process for uh, doing most of these intermixtures. We're moving from black uh, to different uh, values down to our pure titanium white. And if you notice, uh, our achromatic neutral isn't necessarily warm, it isn't necessarily cool, it's kind of in between, um, and that's what we're looking for. So that mix is pretty good. Uh, now that I have it mixed up, just put my brush in. And uh, as you do this, you'll notice, of course, I have my um, easy release tape for my mask. Even though I have the easy release tape uh, to create a clean edge, I still will not brush into the edges and I suggest you take the same approach because even though the tape is there you can easily sweep paint under the edge of the tape and then you'll lose um, that nice edge that you're trying to achieve. Uh, so the best way to do this is usually go with the edge on your first, on your first passes. It may take a few layers 
need to get that built up, but you can do this. Right, I'm gonna move with that edge, I'm not brushing into the edge. All right, make sure you get the brush sort of loaded up with enough paint. It may take a few layers, there we go. Um, and there's no guarantee the ease release tape is just there to prevent the work from becoming sloppy. And you'll notice here, I'm gonna go with the edge again and try to steer clear of brushing into the edge. All right, going with it, or away from it. There we go. I'm starting to get the build up I need here. Okay, give that a moment. Maybe add a little bit more here. So it doesn't take a lot of paint to do these, um, but of course you can mix more paint um, for your own process in this. Um, I didn't mix a lot, I didn't think I would need a lot. Um, but you may want to mix a little bit more for your project, depending on how um, easy it goes for you in doing these bars of um, darkness and light. Okay, so there we go, getting a little thicker. So this is basically it. I'm gonna keep applying um, layers to this top square until I get it um, nice and black and completely saturated uh, with paint because in value and especially in value scale you want a consistent light or dark um, bar of light so that you can measure all other bars of light or dark or gray against your control which is your darkest dark or um, your lightest light which will be pure titanium white here at the bottom so I'll keep doing this um, until I get that and you should do the same. Um, and when I have this uh, done and my white one done uh, for my lightest light and my mid-range gray, uh, we'll get back uh, to filling in the lights and darks that rest in between your mid-range gray, your lightest light, and your darkest dark. All right, see you in a bit. Hello folks, we're at the end of the Project One demo for mixing two chroma darks, one cool and one warm, uh, to create a achromatic black, and then to create an 11 step value scale. So at this point, I've made my darkest dark, which is my achromatic black. I've mixed in a little white to create my mid-range gray, and then I've used pure titanium white for the lightest light um, at the end of the 11 step value scale. Um, so when you begin this work, take your time, pay attention to uh, how you use your palette knife, how you use your brushes, um, storing your paint, using your uh, modifier for extending the drying time. Uh, be sure to clean your brush off with each new uh, bar of light or dark that you make uh, so you can have consistency um, in each of the values that you put in your 11 step value scale. And uh, I look forward to seeing your value scales and I hope this uh, demo was insightful and you're able to get some useful information uh, for your own project work. All right, see you again at the next demo.